Missouri sun rises over a land so blessed by geography, by climate, by all the wonderful things of creation, that our natural bounty is perhaps unparalleled anywhere. Missouri's birds, its fishes, its wildlife, and its scenery are rich and diverse. We have so much to be proud of, so much to take care of and to cherish. God has granted us a natural heritage. Man has the capacity to destroy it or to save it. Perhaps the natural world is a luxury, but many would call it a necessity. And today's luxury may become tomorrow's necessity. If we're to save something for that tomorrow, we must begin today. Missourians are outdoor people, from the hunter and the fisherman to the sun-washed canoeist and the dreaming girl gently enjoying flowers in the meadow. We don't just want places to enjoy nature, we vitally need them. The cowboy humorist Will Rogers said it better than anyone has or ever will. By land, he said, they ain't making it no more. Is this the outdoors of tomorrow? Are we headed for a beehive life? We hope not, and your Department of Conservation has a design aimed at easing scenes like this. Fishing is balm for the troubled and joy for the happy. The fun of fishing is in the doing, not in the taking. Our existing community lake program is not enough. Designed for conservation would add 33 small lakes and 10 larger ones near urban areas. There's more to a lake than fishing. Emphasis would be on multiple use. What we have now is only a start. Missouri is a river state, a land of running water. The tranquility of an Ozark float soothes the abrasive scrape of modern life, lessens the nagging urgency of today and tomorrow and the day after. Stream access and preservation are controversial but an expanded program would ease pressure by leasing or buying access sites only from willing landowners. No physician could prescribe a healing potion as fine as a soft summer day on a lazy stream. The swirling, powerful waters of the nation's largest river, the Mississippi, and her brawling child, the Missouri, offer vast potential for outdoor recreation now largely untapped. It's tough to find access, but the design hopes to bring Missourians and their great rivers together again for pleasure. We've turned our mighty rivers into superhighways, and too long have ignored the enormous natural world that once thrived. Much research on the great rivers has been done in Missouri, but lack of money cripples further work, and the majestic rivers and those who enjoy them are the losers. Graceful drift of a dry fly to the surface of a still pool is the angler's dream. But we're loving trout fishing to death. Design wants to add 30 more miles of trout stream plus hatcheries to ease an intolerable burden on the existing opportunities. Good fishery.
Missouri's management has introduced savage battlers like the Northern Pike. It takes research, hatcheries, and know-how to raise pike. The result can be a moment like this. Even as people, wildlife must have a home. Different wildlife needs different places to live. From the oak hickory forest of the wild turkey to the row crops sought by the dove. Habitat loss is a major concern in conservation today. With every tick of the clock, it's vanishing. Each bulldozed woods, each paved acre, each filled gully means less wildlife in the Missouri outdoors, and those who enjoy nature suffer. Some species like it wet, but when we drain the marshes, we still the rushing beat of wings, silence the music of the wild. Designed for conservation would set aside 121,000 acres of upland wildlife areas, areas for hunting as well as for many other uses. of autumn and a good bird dog just seem to fit together. Steady. That's a good dog. These birds are in good shape. The corn turns golden and the nights are cool. Then comes the dove, seeking the lost warmth. Hunting is part of the magic of autumn, that special time of harvest. The autumn woods flame and fade. It's estimated that our 15 million wooded acres will be only 10 million in a decade. What happens to places like this when the woods are gone? Well, maybe next time. A trophy buck is but one product of a state forest. Missouri's thriving deer herd is an example of what good game management can accomplish, given time, money, personnel, and public cooperation. Similar successes are possible under an expanded conservation program. Six public waterfowl areas now, all crowded, all feeling the pressure of too many hunters. Waterfowl needs diversity, areas to rest and areas to feed. A hole in the ground full of water doesn't make a waterfowl area. And it takes money to provide the wide range of waterfowl habitat needed for an area on public land. Under design, there would be five new waterfowl areas strategically located. <laughs> Wetlands are far more than the span of a waterfowl season each year. They offer nature enthusiasts a rich tapestry of outdoor life year around. Without lands, a conservation program is nothing. But conservation is more than acquiring land. Aldo Leopold said it best. 
Conservation is a state of harmony between men and land. An acre of wildlife habitat doesn't operate by the seasons printed in a code book. It's a year-round bounty for he who would learn to appreciate it. We have almost five million people in Missouri who deserve outdoor experiences. This is the other side of the coin. Public lands are for no special interest group. You don't have to be a hunter to be excited by the sight of something wild. You don't have to be a fisherman to be pleased by the sight of free-flowing water. You don't have to take something from the outdoors to justify having spent time in it. A quiet walk in the woods creates a sense of harmony with nature, a sense of having shed the trappings which insulate us from a far grander scheme than anything we could devise. To some, goldenrod is an occasion for a hearty sneeze, but to others, it's a fragile and beautiful plant. Design recognizes that conservation lands mean more than hunting and fishing and timber. Bittersweet and even a colorful fungus have their enthusiasts. It's a tragic fact that a million acres of woodlands have been lost in Missouri in the past 10 years. The pace is accelerating. And where will tomorrow's children find a Luna moth to contemplate with wonder? The technical eye of the camera forever preserves the black-eyed Susan. But it can't make flowers wave in the summer wind or sparkle after a sudden shower. Wildlife photography is another aspect of the Missouri outdoors, an outdoors that is vanishing. The uses to which conservation land can be put is limited only by the imagination of those who enjoy them. Dog training and field trials are two pastimes on our limited areas. Missouri has far fewer conservation acres than any other major conservation state. And yet, we have been the leader in professional outdoor resource caretaking since 1936, when the citizens established the Department of Conservation by initiative petition. A start on a natural area system has been made. This stand of massive trees is vulnerable to change. Under design for conservation, it will be preserved for its marvelous uniqueness and for its unique inhabitants. Rare always is the pink lady slipper orchid. A careless boot could crush out its life in an instant. But what a tragedy to deprive this youngster of the breathless magic of discovery. These Ozark glades are rocky lands, seemingly barren, but they support fascinating life like the collared lizard, a relic from the age of dinosaurs. Equally fragile are Missouri springs, which feed tiny streams and great rivers. The marsh teems with life all the way from the petite blue-winged teal to the nodding, probing, ever-jittery yellow legs. Within the sheltering stalks of marsh grasses, a rich world exists not seen by many. Design would develop marshes to enrich Missouri's land and water world. What was once 15 million acres of native prairie is a pitiful few thousand acres now. The prairie chicken is one of the victims of the plow and the cow and the pressure of civilization. There's still time to save some of our vast tall grass heritage, but time is running out. <coughs> Hi, 
high in these brooding, jagged cliffs along the Missouri River is a unique wildlife phenomenon. Canada geese who have chosen to make their nest where normally only hawks dare. This natural area has a slender beginning which deserves encouragement. A mated pair of these tenacious birds flies to their lofty nest. With good management, conservationists think the unique flock has a chance to increase along the Missouri cliffs and even to cliff areas of other rivers. Research, so much depends on it, and each answer brings new questions. A vital Missouri resource is its large impoundments. These fishery managers are trying to find how to improve fishing for the most sought after of all big lake fishes, the crappie. But research takes money. Missouri's entire budget is far less than it is in other outdoor-oriented states. Here at Blind Pony Hatchery, we're trying to spawn paddlefish. Natural spawning grounds are being destroyed by the inexorable squeeze of development. We're losing too many races to save bits of our outdoors. One research triumph has been the muscalunge program. These are small but some of our muskies are nearing 30 pounds. Information from creel checks aids in improved fishing. The ugly spew of water pollution robs Missouri fishermen of their sport and scars the Missouri outdoors. An overworked water quality team now exists, but an expanded program would add strength and equipment to this vital conservation task. Studying wildlife is tough. It won't hold still. It doesn't play by our rules. Experimental areas where researchers can pinpoint animal ways are imperative. They are proving grounds to perfect techniques used statewide. There is only one upland wildlife research area in Missouri, and we need more. Research takes many forms, including that on non-game species. Where does a box turtle go? Well, this box turtle is wearing a radio transmitter, which enables a researcher to follow his movements. Knowing what an animal's problems are is the first step in solving them. Research developed wood duck nest boxes so we could remove this duck dandy from the endangered list. A trophy deer is the end result of a long and highly successful restoration program. Even today, check stations serve as a biological monitor of deer herd health and a positive link between deer managers and deer enthusiasts. Missouri's turkey program took management and public cooperation. Missouri cooperates in banding geese on the harsh Canadian tundra. These young geese will wing 2,000 miles ahead of Arctic storms to take their place in the Missouri outdoor scene. Only by understanding such resources can they be managed successfully. Once the skies turned black and the fall shaded the bright spring sun, it was the annual time to burn off the wood. Now fires are less of a hazard, but they still occupy many man hours. Indiscriminate fire is disastrous to Missouri's wildlife and to its forest lands, turning them to worthless gnarled scrubs. Designed for conservation would add more fire protection. We are one of the nation's leading wood product states. Why burn this bonanza up? Mm -hmm. 
Millions of babies, baby trees, are born annually in this nursery where the Department of Conservation raises trees and shrubs for landowners, cities, and organizations. Thousands go free to Missouri school children. An expanded program would let the nursery raise enough trees to meet demand, which now far exceeds supply. To some, trees are something to knock down and get out of the way. But trees are valuable for both people and wildlife. Under Design for Conservation, rural landowners would get help to make the most of their timber crop. Community forestry brings conservation to the big town. City people crave the cool peace of a tree to contrast with the glare of asphalt. The farm, ranch, or weekend hideaway all benefit from a visit by the field service agent whose job it is to advise landowners on making the best use of their land for wildlife. Unfortunately, there is only a handful of these invaluable agents for the entire state. A child, a fishing pole, and a bobber go together like homemade ice cream and a July picnic. But suppose the fish are stunted or few. A troubleshooter from the Department of Conservation can doctor sick ponds and put them on the road to health. Millions of warm water fish are started in hatcheries to stock new waters. Again, demand always exceeds supply. One aspect of Design for Conservation is to provide free fishing for the elderly. Present funds simply don't allow this needed service. It's nice, said one urban fisherman, to sit and let the breezes blow on you. Urban fishing is a tiny program now, but design would add 80 urban lakes in Missouri's major cities. Upland wildlife areas demonstrate to landowners what can be done on private lands. The areas also provide recreation for outdoorsmen. I missed him. Not long ago, the wild turkey existed in isolated Ozark pockets. But research developed hunting methods, and restocking and protection have brought the majestic birds once again to the wooded ridges of more than half of the state's counties. It didn't happen by accident. Each trapped bird has cost about $400. Is it worth it? Ask this hunter. Ask any turkey hunter. The conservation agent is the front line man in wildlife. He's the voice of conservation in his county and is expected to know everybody and everything. Law enforcement is one major responsibility. Few cheat the many by violating game laws. But those who do rob the outdoors and its outdoorsmen. Added agent help for Missourians is part of design too. This is when an agent is put on his mettle. No one has more questions than a child. No one deserves straight answers more. Urban youngsters feel little but unyielding concrete, see little green but traffic lights. A conservation interpretive center near every urban area is a moment of escape 
an instant in time when child meets wild. Design for Conservation proposes 10 such centers, places where, as Wordsworth said, one impulse from a vernal wood may teach you more of man, of moral evil, and of good than all the sages can. outdoors? Is this what we want for our children and their children? Where once thick woodlands fed streams of sparkling grandeur, now there is pollution and busting decay. Where once endless prairies offered a sea of golden grasses billowing under a gentle wind, now there is desolation. Design for conservation is a dream but one cemented in reality. It is a chance to take the lead in leaving for our children a quality of life once cherished, now in danger of being lost forever. <laughs> 